So total em uh, emissions from the industrial sector in 2010 were around 8 gigatons of carbon dioxide and this is about 24% of global emissions in 2010. Well, a number of sources indicate that uh, CO2 emissions from indus industry could roughly double by 2050. Um, and this was confirmed in a recent paper that we published um, in September last year called Halving um, Global CO2 Emissions by 2050. And there um, we found that industry could reach about 17.5 gigatons of CO2 emissions by 2050 in our baseline scenario. The key challenge with reducing emissions from industry is that the industrial sector is made up of a very wide range of different processes. Um, and so the, those processes um, have different challenges um, that need to be addressed. So, however, there are three different um, general categories of technology that can be applied um, to reducing emissions from industry. The first would be um, energy efficiency technologies. And these can be split into both um, process um, specific technologies. So for example, retrofitting a cement kiln with a more advanced kiln or um, modifying a blast furnace to improve energy efficiency in the iron and steel sector. Um, and then on the other side, there are cross-cutting technology options which are applicable to a wide range of different processes. Um, and examples of these include um, variable speed drives or um, improvements to your steam and motor-driven systems. Um, then the th second technology category would be fuel switching. Um, and this includes both um, switching from high carbon intensive fuels such as coal to um, lower carbon fuels such as um, gas. For example, in the ammonia industry, you can produce ammonia from both coal as a feedstock or gas as a feedstock. Um, and then another option would be um, switching to biomass or uh, such as co-firing biomass in a cement kiln. Um, but I think what's important to note here is that both of these technology categories don't allow us to reduce emissions um, far enough. Um, and it would be very difficult to reach our 80% um, reduction target by 2050. Um, so that's where the next technology option comes in, which would be um, CCS applied to the industrial sector. Um, and here, the, for example, the IEA um, has estimated that CCS could um, contribute about 33% reduction um, from industrial CO2, um, CO2 sources by 2050. So I think it's a very key technology for the future. In my opinion, there are three areas that policy should focus on. Um, the first is looking into the barriers and drivers and investment decision-making processes that um, companies go through when deciding whether to invest in energy efficient technologies. Um, this is an area that, that government is certainly looking into. Um, we uh, looked into this area in a recent publication for DEC, which was a review of evidence for decarbonisation of heat um, in industry. Um, but I think that more needs to be done in collaboration with industry and um, actually speaking to companies. Um, the second um, area would be a, a focus on supply chains. Um, and the reason for this is that if uh, retailers um, who are the end users of many products, such as packaging, for example, place pressure on, um, on companies to, to, or on manufacturers, sorry, to be low carbon and to produce low carbon products, then this creates a driver for, for change and for low carbon. And it also um, levels the playing field because the, the criteria of low carbon now um, becomes important together with others such as price and quality. Um, the third um, area would be to, for um, CCS applied to industry to gain um, equal focus together with CCS applied to power. And um, it's exciting to see that this is starting to happen. For example, there is um, a new project called the Teesside Low Carbon Project, which is um, uh, supported by DEC and um, will be investigating a business case for a CCS cluster in the UK.